Hey, what's going on guys? So in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up MongoDB Atlas, which is a basically allows you to have MongoDB, which is a NoSQL database, allows you to have a, a deployment within the cloud so that you don't have to have it on your local machine. And this video is actually really, really important if you've taken my Mernstack course, my Node.js course on Udemy, and also a bunch of YouTube videos, because what I would usually do is use MLab, which is a, a fantastic service. Same thing, you know, uh, deployments in the cloud of MongoDB. But as you can see right here, there's an announcement that MLab is now part of MongoDB. So MongoDB Inc. has has purchased MLab. And if you go to the blog post here, it basically says that within 12 months, you're going to have to migrate to Atlas. Okay, so this is really important for anybody that's taken my courses that uses MLab. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to set up MongoDB Atlas. We're going to create a cluster, add a user, stuff like that. And then I'm going to take my dev connector project, which is the social network that we build in the Mernstack course, which I'll put a link to in the description, by the way. Um, and then we're going to clone it and I'm going to show you how we can connect to Atlas. And there's basically we don't have to do anything extra. We just need to change the connection string and it will automatically um, connect to Atlas. All right. So what you're going to want to do is go to MongoDB.com and go up to cloud and choose MongoDB Atlas. Okay, and if you say get started for free, it'll take you down to the registration form. Fill that out. I already have an account, so I'm going to go ahead and log in. Okay. Let's log in here. All right. So, I don't I I basically from scratch here. You'll see I already built a cluster and stuff, but I deleted it, so I'm basically starting from scratch. You'll be this ta this progress bar will be at 0% for you if you're just getting started. Um but yeah, the first thing we want to do is create a cluster. Okay? So we're going to say build cluster. And this may look familiar if you've used MLab before. It's just a different UI, but uh, same kind of options. We want to choose a, a cloud provider. We're going to choose AWS, which is the default. Uh, I'm going to choose North Virginia for my uh, data center uh, cluster tier. If you take a look at this, we're going to use the free version, which is good for development. If you're in production, then you're probably probably going to want to, you know, add some some storage and stuff like that. Uh, but we're going to choose free. We don't need any of these additional uh, settings, so we're going to keep those the way they are. Cluster name, you can call this whatever you want. I'm just going to call it TM cluster. And we'll say create cluster. Okay, so kind of the same process as MLab. Oh, I hate these things. Traffic lights. Another one. Uh, is that it? All right. So one thing I really don't like about this uh, compared to MLab is the amount of time it takes to create a cluster. You can see new clusters take between seven and 10 minutes. So I might actually have to pause the video. Um, and with MLab, it was literally like 20 seconds. But while that's doing that, we should be able to create a user. Um, so down here, you'll see build your first cluster that will get crossed out. And then we want to create your first user. Uh, so we want to go to security and right here, add new user and you just want to put in a username. I'm just going to say Brad one, two, three for both the username and the password. And you can choose uh, Atlas admin. You're probably going to want this here. Read and write to any database. Uh, and then this one is for read only. So we're going to keep this selected. You can also make them a temporary user if you want to do that. And they can expire in a certain amount of time, six hours, one day, one week. But we'll just leave that unchecked. We'll say add user. That user already exists. I already created that user. So let's do one, two, three, four. And add user. Yeah, you can see I actually already have that Brad one, two, three user. So these users will as you can see the roles these can write and read um, any database write to and read from any database and then what you want to do is go to ip whitelist so i actually already have this let me just delete that so you want to add an ip address now there you have a couple options here you can um, 
add your current IP address, which is which would be your dev machine where you're developing the application. Um, and then once you deploy, you want to put your server's IP address or you could allow access from anywhere, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to click that and it'll allow us to connect from anywhere with the username and password. Um, but if you're in production, if it's a real application for a client, I, I'd suggest just adding your your IP addresses. You can also make them temporary, just like the users, so they would expire in a certain amount of time. So let's go ahead and confirm. And now we're going to just be able to connect to this this cluster from anywhere. If we go to overview, looks like it's set up, I believe. So we should be all set. So if we look at our task list here, we built the cluster, we created the user, we whitelisted our IP address, which I just um, I'm accepting all IP addresses. Uh, they still need the, the username and password, obviously. And then to connect to our cluster, we click this connect button right here. And it depends on what we want to do. If we want to connect through the Mongo shell, we would click here. We want to connect through an application, so we would click here. You also have a tool called MongoDB Compass. If you download MongoDB locally, you'll get this tool called Compass, which is sort of like a, like a, a, like a PHP MyAdmin for MySQL, like where you can mess with your data, stuff like that, kind of like a GUI to, to, to interact with your database. But what we want is to connect through our application. So if we click this, it'll show us the screen and we're going to want the standard connection string. Okay, so if you've taken any of my courses where we've used MLAB, all you would have to do is replace the string with this. Okay, and down here you have some some documentation pages for the node MongoDB driver, Ruby, Python, Java and so on. If you want to take a look at that. So now that we've created a cluster, uh, we've added a user, we have our connection string. Let's um, let's go ahead and grab the dev connector application and What we need to do here is clone it or you can download the zip, whatever you want. And then we need to install the dependencies for both the server, our express server and the client, which is React. And I did create a script to do that, but some people have problems with this. So I would suggest just CDing into the client folder and running NPM install as opposed to doing this. And then we set up concurrently to run both the server and the, the front end at the same time with NPM run dev. Um, and then we just need to create a keys dev file, which will have um, our Mongo UI URI string, which before was MLAB, but now we'll put our Atlas string in and it should just work fine. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to bring over my terminal here and I'm just going to do a git clone and let me just grab the string here. And we'll paste that in. We'll run it. It's going to clone it into a folder called dev connector. Let's CD into dev connector and I'm going to open up VS code here. Okay, so as the script says, or I'm sorry, as the GitHub documentation says, we have to add a keys dev file. So that goes in the config folder. You'll see there's a keys JS. It basically looks to see if it's in production. Uh, if it is, it'll run keys prod which has our environment variables that would be on the server. And if you took the course, you know that the, these are stored in Heroku. Um, if not, it's going to load keys dev underscore dev, which we don't have. So we need to create that. So let's say keys underscore dev dot JS. And if we go back to GitHub and just grab this right here, we have to put that in. And the secret can be anything. I'm just going to put the word secret and then the URI is going to be our Atlas URI. So let's go back to Atlas and copy this. Okay, we'll paste that in and you're going to want your username, which is for me, Brad, one, two, three, four, and then put your password in, which is for me, Brad, two, one, two, three, four. All right, and we'll save that. So now we should be able to run this. We just need to install our dependencies first. You can notice that there's no node modules folder in, on the server or on the client, which is the React app. So let's uh, oops, let's go ahead and open up our terminal and let's run npm install on the server because we're in the root right now. This should create a node modules folder. 
Okay. So once that's done, let's go ahead and CD into the client folder, which is React, and we're going to also run npm install, and that will set up the React scripts from Create React app, as well as anything else we used in the course, like um, Axios, and I think we used a couple other small modules. Oh, of course, Redux and stuff like that. And like I said, I, there is a script. Um, npm run client install, which will do the same thing. It'll it goes into the client folder and runs npm install. But I've had some issues with that and some other people have. So I think I'm going to change the documentation. Um, oh, sorry about that, guys. Sorry about that. Uh, all right. So let's go ahead and CD back into Express. So now we're back in. Whoops. We're back into the root. And let's go ahead and run npm run dev. So like I said, it runs. Uh, I don't know if I said it, but we're using concurrently. It runs the front end react application as well as the back end server. So we should be able to now sign up and then that will get put into a user's collection in our MongoDB database in Atlas. So let's try it. Let's sign up. And if you're interested in building this application, then uh, I'll put a link to my Mernstack course in the in the description. All right, let's put a password. I will be updating it uh, at some point as well. All right, so we should be registered. Let's try to log in here and we'll take a look at Atlas in a second. So what did I say? Brad at Gmail. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's submit and we're logged in. Okay, so once you log in, you have a dashboard and it says you have not set up your profile. Please add some info so we could go ahead and add some info here. Um, let's see. We'll say senior developer company. Website, I'm not going to do. Let's just do the required field. So skills we will say JS PHP. Oops, JS PHP. Python. And that should be good. If you want to add social network link, network links, you can. But we're just going to submit that. And there we go. So now we are in our dashboard. We can add experiences, which are basically like jobs, stuff like that. We can add education and this will all get put into our database. So now um, the fact that it's showing us this means that it worked. But let's double check and go into um, our database here. So if we go into our TM cluster and we go to collections, we should have uh, we have two collections. We have users because remember we registered a user and you can see it right here. Brad Traversy, Brad at Gmail. Um, it uses Gravatar for an avatar, our hashed password, all that stuff. Profiles. We created a, a little profile and you can see it has like the skills array. It has our handle, our status, stuff like that. So that's it. I mean, if you're using MLab in any of the projects you created with me or any other project, you simply switch out the string with uh, with your MongoDB Atlas string and it should just work. Uh, and like I said, I will be updating my courses soon. Um, the Node.js one and the Node, Node and Express one really needs updating. I'll probably do that. And then the Mernstack course. Um, at the same time, I'm also doing a, an HTML CSS course uh, right now, which will have like Flexbox and the grid system. We'll build a few cool projects. Uh, so we have that look to look forward to as well. But yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you want to mess around with the dev connector um, application, even if you didn't take the course, go ahead and, and clone it. You can do exactly what I just did. We have like posts. Actually, let's do that. We'll say hello world. So we have a post here and if we go back to our database and reload, we should see a post collection. And there it is. Hello world. All right. So hopefully you got hopefully this is helpful um, and I, I will be putting this either in as a video in those courses on Udemy or just a link to this video. So thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.